you and I have talked about the futures. We've seen what the next level, what the next generation is going to look yeah. like, and we are way behind when it comes to it. Our dynamic, our individual dynamism and our athleticism isn't going to cover us forever. Some of these, some of these uh, nations are taking women's football way more serious. They're developing much better talent. Some of these clubs are paying a lot of money now for women's football. Women's football is on the rise elsewhere. To some degree, this this could be. And, and Yanni Mar, uh, Marte uh, at Yanni Mars asked, no. is this the Trinidad moment for the U.S. women's national team? And I want to take that one step further beyond just like, yo, is this is this the moment where there's we we sort of come to the come to the realization or a, a moment of reckoning or a come to Jesus moment, whatever you want to call it, uh, with the the fact that our squad isn't good enough. I want to take that further and say, like, is this a moment where real change happens, where we start to take development in this country so much, so much more serious, where our national team or sorry, our club teams start to develop academies and start to really. I mean, think about it. Naomi Gurma is 23 years old. She's only played professionally for two years. There's going to come a time. There's going to come a moment where that's not good enough. We're not we're not going to have these players for long enough. We're not going to fulfill yeah. their their potential because they're only getting to play such a shortened period because they're in college for so long as opposed to an academy system. So I want to hear your thoughts on that. Do you think this is the moment where maybe we turn that corner? There's some changes in the in the in the federation and we start to take the development of this game so much more serious. Um so I don't I'm not as panicked, right? We we just won two World Cups, right? So I'm not in some place where the you know everything that we're doing is 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 flawed and I I don't See, it's definitely not the same as the 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 Trinidad, uh, you know, debacle. Um, so, if Trinidad was ten on a scale of one to ten, where would you say this is? I think this is like a uh, this is like a six. This is a real cause for concern, and this is this is to say that and and this is this World Cup has changed my mindset a lot because not only you know. Uh, we, we get a lot of comments and people being like, you know, oh, you don't know this player. You don't know that player. Like, yo, they're great. They're, and, and it's like, yo, I'm watching NWSL. I, who, who, the players that play here, I, I'm in my mind, the NWSL is the most competitive women's league in the world. So that's what I, I watch. And I'm, I'm not watching, uh, uh, you know, Liga MX Femenili that much. I'm not watching, um, you, you know, La Liga, uh, the women. I'm not watching WSL that much. I, I'll, I'll Champions League. I'll, I'll, I'll catch a couple games, but I, I think the 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 cause for concern here is coaching. I think we're falling behind on coaching. It seems like because of the investment in win, women's football around the world, and not just in Europe. Uh, it's just you're seeing. Look at the game against uh, uh, South Af South Africa, Netherlands. Yo, South Africa was like that was a pro that was a proper team. They played well together. They had yeah, yeah, yeah. good. They were lucky to get yeah, through. yeah, good individual players and just mistakes is what you know led them to lo losing that game essentially. And so th I think this is this is opened my eyes to the fact that there are there not only are there good players playing all around the world, there are good teams they are good properly coached teams that that understand the game tactically on a level that some of our younger players may not where because we see in nwsl the you you got a a player like trinity robin who is just athletically just much more gifted than a lot of the, the uh, players that she may face and i think that that kind of seeps into the mind of of coaches that are like yo Give her the ball, let her rock, and and we'll probably end up winning. And then they, but then they do win, right? The Washington Spirit won uh, the NWSL championship just uh, last year, so or two years ago, whatever. Um, so, I, so that's my my thing. I think th this World Cup showed that the difference between Jill Ellis and and Vlatko, where Jill Ellis, look, very obvious, like a lot of players didn't really like her. There were issues. Uh, you know, players didn't really vouch for her to to, to come back. And Vlaco, they were like, "Yo, this is this dude's a homie." And we talk about this all the time. You go from authoritarian coach to chill coach, and uh, yeah. you you never you never do the same because you need right. you need that change. And they went no, to it's two a days hacky sack, <laughs> two a days hacky sack. That's how you do it. So they <laughs> went they went to the, the the chill coach that that was you know better better vibes. And and it didn't work out, and that happens. Too many vibes. 
Too many, too many vibes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and that's the, that's my, you know, kind of synopsis of, of, of this, uh, the, these last few years. But we've had plenty of examples. The Olympics, we had the, the, the losing three friendlies in a row to the European teams. Um, Vlako's just not, he had his chance, not cut for it. And, and we, we move on to, to somebody that is more of a, 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 a tactician and, and understands a real. And no disrespect to him, but like a, an actual tactical coach. Yeah. Someone who is going to ask more of each of these individual players to work as a team as opposed to use that individual dynamism. I'm not as optimistic as you. To me, you said six. To me, this is more of an eight. Um, you know, I, I get the feeling that, you know, I'm the one or, you know, that that could see like the monsters coming, but nobody wants to believe me, you know, Um this this feels like we're losing grip. You know, we talked about how, you know, uh, financial fair play is allowing or really asking of a lot of these English teams to invest a ton of money into the game. They're creating some strong teams. And look, you and I have always been a big, big fans of the women's game in this country and NWSL because of morning footy and having access to this Champions League stuff. I've I've become way more familiar with the women's game outside of just who Arsenal women are playing yeah. um, at that time. Uh, and. I'm seeing in real time, you know, you, you ask yourself, like, why would Sam Kerr leave NWSL for for uh, Chelsea or for Europe? Is, is it could it possibly be the money? And you're seeing like, oh, wow, they are investing way more into this game. A lot of players are going to want to play in Europe versus NWSL. Uh, Ellie Menjim talked about how there was an article in Australia that uh, said, what if Sam Kerr would have been allowed to play the sport that she really loves, which is AFL, which is the Aussie rules football, the one that's played on that. Uh, oval uh, sort of pitch, yeah, yeah. and and he talked about how ridiculous of a comment that is. they're kind of going through the same thing we we went through in the states a while ago. Uh, but he's saying how ridiculous that is. She makes three times more than the highest paid AFL player, and that's the number one sport in Australia. Um, and those are men, and she makes three times more than that playing football in for Chelsea women. And it just gives you an idea the support that these women are getting with fan bases showing up and getting to use big stadiums and. You're starting to see that it feels like America is losing its grip on this sport. Part of the reason why America fell in love with this sport is Brandy Chastain in 99. I'm not taking anything away from the from the women that came before her, but that moment was so iconic. That's the reason why even a lot of young boys fell in love with the sport, never mind just young girls that were inspired to want to play it. And we're starting to lose that grip. And you talk about co- coaching. To me, it starts at the lower levels. And I think this is a sign that yes, Sweden was not a better team than us, but that does not take away from the fact that Japan, England, Germany at points, France at points have looked wholly better than we do. We've been able to sort of muscle our way to the top, and that advantage is now gone or seemingly gone. Yeah. Um, we need to develop better players. We need to develop players that play as a team, and we need a coach, like you said, that's willing to coach them and make them a, a unit of 11 players as opposed to 11 players out there that are all units. And when that day happens is the day we will continue to have a grasp on the sport. Right now, I feel like it's slipped past. And maybe uh, even the next World Cup, I'm not going to think of the U.S. as 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 the dominant force. And that's that's a shame because it's been a long time since that's happened. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're not too far off when uh, with how we see things. I mean, I I, I you know, I, I just think the I I have a probably a little bit higher um, uh, you know optimism. Uh, not not optimism, but just thought of the players that we currently have. I think they do. Um, you know, it's 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 simply I think they do play well together, and this I think today was a, a great example of that. It's just the the, the coaching kind of won't allow. I'm like. Again, I'm just like, why won't Emily Fox make overlapping runs? That's it. So yeah. to me, that's a coach that's telling her to not do that. So, yeah. so that's uh, yeah. I I'm think, also like, yo, why are we why are we leaving so much space in this midfield? Dog? <laughs> this seems weird. Uh, so frustrating. Look, I mean, I, I think still a lot to be uh, uh, proud of. And look, for us, as as you know, we're, you know, we're obviously fans of the team. We we cover the team. We've interviewed so many of the players on the team. It, it is. You know, when, when it comes to us personally, uh, you know, I, I have a, just a huge amount of admiration and love for all these uh, uh, players. Same. And whether we, you know, uh, criticize them or, or not, it's obviously we want what's best for the team. They do uh, uh, as well. And it's just a it's it's a th- it's a thing that, you know, the U.S. Women's National Team, to me, at least for me personally, means something a little bit different than the men's national team. There's a there's a different there's a different fight. There's a there's a activism attached to it there's a different meaning you know sometimes people are like you know what that's why the the whole thing about 
oh, they, they shouldn't be dancing or, or whatever. It's just like, bro, the context is kind of important here. They they stand for something a little bit different than simply what the, the men stand for. And 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 not to take you know, like the, the men do important things as well. But there's just uh, that's why I'm not I'm not There's more on the line. Yeah, I'm not so hung up on whether they win or lose. I, I really do think it's admirable and important. The message that they that they send, the inspiration that they you know, you see all the play, all these players even though on the other national teams about how it's really an effort to grow the game, to inspire young girls to, to, to get involved. So that's, that stuff makes me very, very proud. And, and I, sometimes it's hard to be proud to be an American uh, uh, from time to time because of, uh, you know, the issues that we have. But the U.S. Women's National Team, to me, really stands for something that uh, I can, like, really support and get behind. So that's, uh, you know, that's why this is, like, it, it, it difficult and emotional in a different way than than when the men uh, are knocked out of a World Cup. Uh, it's I, still I think again we I think we still have the best talent in the world and I'm excited about the next World Cup because I think it's going to be uh, great and I and I fully expect uh, the U S to turn things around and fix you know this just get get a proper ten that can uh, you know ping some balls around <laughs> and 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 I, I would yeah. they would still be my favorites in, in the next World Cup.